and uh, it's a pleasure to be here on this occasion to celebrate uh, Uber's uh, birthday. Uh, so uh, thanks uh, to the organizers to, uh, for putting this up and uh, for inviting me. Uh, so uh, almost uh, most of my talk will be devoted to uh, some uh, topics that uh, are really uh, totally um, in overlap with uh, Uber's uh, interest. Uh, but let me start with uh, a dedication of this talk today, quite unrelated to Uber's work. But um, so I want to dedicate this talk to uh, the cleaners in Jussieu, who are uh, uh, currently on strike st since uh, uh, last Tuesday uh, to defend uh, decent working conditions. So it's quite uh, already a historical strike movement because it's uh, 130 of them all on strike. Uh, so I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, mention them and uh, dedicate my talk to them. Uh, so uh, after an introduction to uh, a quick introduction, of course, uh, to uh, loop models and uh, connectivity operators, I uh, would like to uh, tell you about uh, two uh, main uh, topics uh, that uh, I've uh, worked on uh, in the last uh, few years. So uh, one of them is uh, in the continuum limit of loop models, the computation of uh, operator product expansion uh, constants. And the other one is uh, on the lattice, uh, so uh, uh, how to define and study the, the fusion of uh, operators. Uh, so first, as uh, many uh, of you know, um, in uh, 2D classical uh, uh, critical systems, we can define uh, random uh, fractal curves. So uh, typical examples are uh, domain walls in, uh, ferro in critical ferromagnets, um, hulls of uh, percolation clusters, or uh, trajectories of uh, self-avoiding walks. And uh, so these are non-trivial uh, fractal curves. And uh, of course, the, uh, the most uh, basic uh, characterization of these curves is to give the value of, the, of their uh, fractal dimensions. But um, of course, uh, the finest, finer structure is uh, described by um, correlations of um, connectivity operators that uh, I will uh, uh, talk about today. So on the lattice, a very simple description, uh, probably the simplest uh, model which accounts for this type of uh, uh, critical random curve is uh, the so-called dense ON model, where on each uh, plaquette of the lattice you can have two uh, different uh, loop configurations. And then uh, you give a Boltzmann weight to each configuration according to the number of uh, closed loops. Uh, so you have just uh, one uh, external parameter, uh, which is a small n, associated to this uh, non-local feature of the configuration. Um, a relation to percolation comes uh, from a more gener general relation, actually. Uh, the loops, the loop configurations in this model uh, are in one-to-one uh, -one correspondence and with the same uh, weights, the same probability measure, I mean, as uh, the contours of clusters in the fortune castelline model uh, with a special relation between uh, the, uh, the FK parameter and the ON parameter. And at N equal 1, you recover percolation. There exists a, a dilute variant uh, which uh, covers uh, uh, two of the examples I, I gave before. Okay, and uh, so this is an intrinsically non-local model. So uh, what could play the role of a local operator in these models? Well, um, a family of operators uh, are those which um, are defined by marking points, which I have uh, uh, depicted here in uh, red. And um, the correlation functions of these operators are, in fact, non-local uh, probability uh, events 
for, ex for instance, here you could consider uh, studying the probability that uh, a number of given points sit on the same loop or uh, something you have not depicted, the probability that a uh, number of given points sit on the same uh, cluster, percolation of a or fk cluster. Okay, so in this language, yes, uh, quote, unquote, uh, local operators uh, are just insertions of these markers. Now, uh, a great deal of results uh, is, uh, is uh, available about, uh, about these uh, the uh, theoretical study of these models. And so here I gave a, a little table uh, to indicate that uh, on the lattice, the generating algebra, namely the, the algebra which um, uh, uh, generates the whole spectrum uh, from uh, uh, a basic set of uh, uh, states. Uh, so in the lattice description, it's uh, the so-called periodic temporally lib uh, algebra. Uh, whereas in the continuum, it's uh, the Vira Zoro cross Vira Zoro bar. And the operator content on the lattice is described by uh, standard modules or uh, quotients of uh, standard modules. Uh, and while on the continuum from the Coulomb gas approach that I will detail a, a little bit more uh, later, you, you have a discrete set, a discrete set of uh, primary operators and they are descendants under the generating algebra. Uh, the typical questions we want to ask, let me, let me show you uh, the three uh, uh, typical questions. Uh, so um, once the spectrum is known, which is the case, uh, typical uh, questions, which I want to emphasize are, are still not totally answered, are, uh, well, what are the rules of the operator algebra, uh, the, the fusion rules? Uh, in minimal models, you have a uh, finite number of uh, primaries, and so uh, the, uh, the fusion rules are, are given by the Verlinde uh, formula. But here we have a discrete infinite set of, of primary operators. Uh, so you can't use this, uh, this tool. Uh, and what about the structure constant of the OPE? The, these, uh, these structure uh, constants C here. And uh, finally, with these, uh, these uh, um, uh, elements, so one should be able to compute universal correlation functions of uh, connectivity operators. So let me first describe uh, a number of uh, results, quite recent results. Well, these, these ones are not that recent. But uh, results in the continuum. So in the continuum, it has been known since uh, the work of many people, uh, in including uh, Uber, of course, that the uh, proper scaling theory to describe the, the uh, scaling limit of the model is the so-called Coulomb gas, uh, which uh, one could al also call the Im imaginary Liouville, because it's, it's really uh, exactly the Liouville action but with an imaginary uh, background charge and uh, uh, with uh, the uh, special feature that the, the field should be compactified. Uh, and here I give, uh, just for completeness, the uh, relation between the Liouville and ON parameters. Uh, the, uh, this background charge term modifies the central charge, some, something that uh, Jean Bernard has always uh, already shown uh, this morning. And uh, um, here on this slide, I will describe very quickly the discrete set of operators with, with no proof, but just uh, the important two features as, as uh, the following. Because of this compactification uh, condition, uh, there are actually two consequences. Uh, one is that uh, the uh, vertex operators have discrete, discretized uh, charges uh, just because otherwise they would not be uh, well defined. And also uh, because the field lives on, on a periodic uh, uh, curve, uh, on the cycle, uh, there, there can be uh, defects either at points or around the non-trivial cycle of the uh, uh, surface, 
with uh, a discrepancy on the value of the field, which uh, must be a, a, a multiple of the compactification radius. This leads to uh, the uh, following, following spectrum, which, uh, which was actually uh, described in, in this paper, already mentioned this morning. So you have uh, a sector with uh, uh, zero defect. Uh, I call the defect these uh, discrepancies of the field. Uh, th they are also called the energy-like operators. And they, they have uh, catch indices, uh, which are uh, just uh, positive integers. And a sector with non-zero defect charges, so indexed by the, uh, ch the charge index M, uh, a non-zero non uh, uh, natural number, relative number, I mean. And uh, um, it, it's a, a family of operators with uh, non, uh, sorry, where H and H bar are, dis are different, first of all. And uh, one of the catch indices is fractional. So this is the spectrum. Now, what about the OPEs for these operators in the discrete spectrum? The energy-like operators are degenerate in the sense of uh, Vera Zoro, uh, whereas uh, the, uh, the defect operators, uh, I should, uh, should have written, can only be degenerate. So if, if E is, uh, is actually an integer, well, some of these are degenerate, but just on one side, maybe on, uh, well, could be on uh, Vera Zoro or Vera Zoro bar side. So they are not uh, fully degenerate under Vera Zoro. So a priori, what can we say about the fusion rules? For energy-like operators, it's simple. It's uh, the well-known fusion rules of uh, degenerate operators. Uh, when we fuse an energy-like operator with something else, also, the result is, uh, is well-known. But uh, at present time, I don't think uh, the general answer to uh, this question here, the, f the fusion of uh, to defect operator is, is known. Uh, so in, um, in a, a work with uh, Benoit Estienne in, uh, in 2015, um, we uh, tried to compute as many OPE coefficients as we could in this model. So of course, for, um, for energy-like operators, uh, the result is uh, the same as in uh, dotsenko fatayev's uh, results from uh, 84. It's this ugly product of, uh, of uh, ratios of uh, gamma functions. Uh, but a uh, pretty new result was that uh, I I if, if uh, you consider a coupling constant between uh, two defect operators and uh, an energy-like operator, here I give a specific example, but our result is a bit more uh, general. And then you, what is nice is you simply obtain that the coupling constant is the geometric mean of a coupling constant uh, from the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic uh, parts of the operators. Um, now another uh, quite uh, different set of operators I've not uh, discussed yet, but which are of uh, uh, pretty important uh, interest, are uh, what I want to call loop weighting operators. And um, the, the idea dates back to a paper by uh, Aldo Delfino and uh, his uh, student uh, Jacopo Vitti at that time in uh, 2011 where uh, they did the following reasoning. So they consider the fortune castelline uh, cluster model. And uh, in this model, they consider the probability that uh, three given points sit on the same cluster. So think of, uh, I, I think uh, even in the original model, it was done for just for peculation. And um, you can uh, remark or notice that this, the, this event, that the three point points sit on the same cluster, is equivalent to saying that in the loop model, remember the loops 
are the boundaries of, of clusters. So it's, it's the same as uh, uh, requiring that no loops separates R1 from uh, the set R2, R3. And, uh, and also that uh, no loops separates R2 from the two others and R3 from the two others. So it can be fully expressed uh, in the uh, loop model as a correlation function of operators which uh, modify uh, the loops, uh, the weight of loops that they uncycle. So uh, gener generically, can inter introduce these loop weighting operators uh, uh, in this, uh, with this non-local definition. V alpha gives a weight N alpha uh, with this formula to uh, the loops that encycle only RG. I mean only uh, RG and not the other uh, marked points in the correlation function. Um, using uh, the, the Coulomb gas uh, correspondence, you can easily compute the conformal dimensions. And uh, um, if you want N alpha to be, to be zero, that's, uh, that's the, the case uh, they were interested in. So you want to uh, exclude all uh, configurations where uh, a, a point is is isolated from the two others by a loop. It means you want n alpha to be zero. You can choose alpha uh, for this value. Um, and then uh, Delfino and Viti make the following simple argument. They say, well, since the action for the loop model is uh, the imaginary Liouville action, well, then this uh, three-point function, well, this three-point probability should have, of course, the, uh, the generic uh, well-known form for uh, due to global conformal invariance. And the, th the three-point amplitude should be the one uh, from the, uh, for the imaginary Liouville uh, CFT, namely uh, this, uh, this, uh, this constant uh, computed uh, earlier independently uh, by uh, Zamanuchikov and uh, Kostov and Petkova. And it works. Well, uh, you can... Uh, you can, uh, well, they, they did uh, uh, big Monte Carlo simulations and, uh, and they did uh, confirm this, uh, this correspondence. So in the work with Hubert uh, and uh, Jesper, uh, what we, we, uh, we did was uh, simply to extend this idea to uh, not only per collation, but uh, the whole uh, ON model and uh, not only n, n alpha equals zero, but all n alphas. So uh, we are led to define, defining a three-point function in the following way. So we sum over all loop configurations. Here, here it's on the annulus, but it could be on the sphere, for instance. And we give uh, a weight uh, n to uh, the, the trivial loops, the ones uh, drawn in blue n1 to the loops which encycle only r1, uh, n2 for the loops only encycling uh, r2, and so on. So you see, for instance, here, this point is, has no loop encycling it, sorry. This one has one, and this one has, uh, uh, sorry, this one has two, and this one has one. And uh, with, uh, well, rather modest numerics, because it's, it's just um, the exact diagonalization of the transfer matrix, uh, we found very good argument uh, with, uh, with uh, the, the Delfino VT prediction. Uh, so uh, this three-point function behaves, of course, uh, as expected from, uh, from conformal invariance, and with a uh, coefficient, a universal coefficient, uh, which is given by uh, the uh, Zamolochikov uh, Kostov Petkova formula. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty nice result, and uh, well, I want to emphasize it's it's uh, a bit peculiar because it's um, a result for operators which are not in the spectrum. But it's a non-local model, so uh, in the end, uh, it's not that uh, disturbing. 
this t it's a set of operators which you, you could view as probes in the model. But they don't really correspond to a state in the, in, in the transfer matrix. Uh, I still have a little bit of time to tell you about the lattice uh, counterpart, if, if you have enough energy to hear. Um, so this question uh, on fusion uh, relies on a little bit of background. So <laughs> um, I, uh, I will try not to be too long on, on this, but um, I really need to, uh, to give a little background on the temporary lib, uh, especially the periodic version of the temporary lib algebra. So the algebra is uh, generated by uh, uh, the diagrams EJ, which are drawn in this way, and the translation to the right uh, and to the left. Uh, and uh, uh, the composition of, uh, of operators is simply obtained by stacking the corresponding diagram on top of each other. So it's uh, formally defined by uh, this uh, set of uh, relations. And in the model, every time uh, uh, a closed loop is, uh, is formed with a trivial uh, topology, it, uh, it's replaced by uh, a weight n. An important uh, aspect is that uh, from this, these operators ej, you can form braid operators, which uh, generate a braid group uh, with, with this uh, uh, particular uh, combination. And um, furthermore, using these uh, braid operators, you can uh, uh, construct central elements, uh, elements which uh, commute with the whole algebra. And they will be useful in the, in the remaining. Uh, a little bit on, on uh, representations. So, the, uh, so uh, if you want, basic representations of this algebra are obtained uh, by uh, link states. So the, the most uh, simple, I mean the simplest uh, module you can imagine is the one made of uh, link states. It, it means exact matching, uh, matchings of, of the endpoints with no intersections. So for instance, here I have uh, eight points, and this is one basis element of the uh, vacuum module. And uh, on top of this, you have a set of so-called standard modules, the WKZ, uh, um, which are uh, generated by link states with a marked point. Uh, and uh, it has two parameters, K uh, determines the number of uh, defects attached. So if you want loop segments attached to the mark point, here it's uh, k equal 2, we, so four uh, defects. Here you have zero defect. And you also have a, a, a dotted line uh, connecting the marked point to uh, the, the point at the origin. And uh, uh, I'm not giving any detail, but the, the parameter z um, determines the weight. Uh, so if, if you have no defects, it's, it determines uh, the weight of uh, a loop which encycles the mark point. And um, if k is positive, k uh, z uh, determines the, uh, the factors which are uh, which uh, come out when uh, under the action of the algebra, a loop. Uh, well, uh, uh, sorry, a, a defect crosses the, the dashed line. And on, uh, on this uh, family of uh, modules, you can define a bilinear form, uh, which is uh, actually defined with uh, the very similar uh, graphical rules, and uh, which is compatible with the uh, algebra. I mean, the EJs are uh, self-adjoint under this, uh, this uh, scalar product. Uh, just a last uh, slide of um, background, uh, because otherwise I cannot uh, say anything useful, unless you all know about these uh, standard modules. What is happening, Jesper? Okay. <laughs> um, yes, so... Um, uh, here I'm giving more detail because I, uh, I guess that uh, most people are, are much more uh, familiar with the uh, VR0 representation series than with the periodic uh, temporally lib algebra. But um, 
So sorry for those who already know, know this by heart, um, including Uber. And uh, okay, so um, a, f a few uh, key features. Uh, this WKZ uh, they, they, they play, play uh, essentially the role of the irreducibles, except for uh, a number of uh, cases which are known. Uh, so. Um, WKZ is irreducible, except when uh, Z is of the form of a, a, a positive, well, a non-zero um, integer uh, power of Q. And in, in this case, W has a submodule uh, with, uh, with, uh, with this form, which is also a, a standard module. And this is due to Graham and, and Lehrer. Um, the central elements, uh, they uh, are proportional to the identity on the, on the standard modules. And um, to make a connection with uh, the connectivity operators I was uh, talki talking about, so you can define now in the transfer matrix uh, formally, you can define your connectivity operator as uh, introducing a marked point connected to, to the origin by, uh, by this dotted line and uh, with uh, a number of defects uh, possibly uh, originating from, from this uh, mark point. And uh, because uh, W is irreducible, so for generic Z, this, this is for generic Z actually, um, then it's easy, easy to show that if you act with this operator on a state with no mark point, then of course, you obtain uh, a combination of states with a mark point, and the action of the algebra actually uh, generates the whole uh, standard module. And now the uh, difficult question now is uh, how to define consistently a fusion operation between these, uh, these uh, standard modules. So a number of, of uh, groups uh, already uh, tackled this, uh, this question and uh, with uh, uh, Alexis Morin Duchesne we, we came with yet another proposal. So let me tell you uh, quickly about what we proposed. It, it's, uh, it seems from a very simple idea well when you fuse uh, two uh, uh, when you fuse two sorry two uh, modules with uh, one mark point each, you should obtain a module with two mark points. Okay, so um, we define a, a family of modules which with two mark points and so two sets of defects. So here for instance, we have one mark point with two defects and a second mark, mark point with no defect at all. And uh, the module comes with a number of, uh, of twist parameters uh, for the segments which cross or wrap uh, around the, the, the cylinder or cross the, the, the dotted lines. Um, we allow the EJs to connect the, the defects from, the different, uh, from two different uh, mark points. And so here, here are our uh, two main results on this, uh, uh, this uh, family of uh, uh, link states. First, uh, quite a non-trivial and probably the most uh, difficult uh, thing to, to convince you about uh, is that indeed with uh, the properly detailed definition, of course here I don't give enough details, you have to look up the paper to, to be convinced, but with, with the proper uh, definition this uh, actually gives a, a representation of the periodic temporal lib algebra. Second result, for uh, generic values of Z, we, are, we have been able to decompose uh, this uh, two mark point module onto uh, the standard modules. And our proof is actually based on uh, the properties, well, the, uh, the study of the eigenspaces uh, of F and F bar. And it's, it's pretty basic, but of course I don't have any time even to sketch the proof. And um, finally, uh, an important thing uh, to uh, connect with fusion 
is, um, and probably the most convincing that we have at the moment, is uh, to look at a correlation function. So consider a cor correlation function of this uh, uh, sort. So you, you have uh, four um, connectivity operators, uh, OKX, OLY, and uh, well, two copies of them, huh? OLY, OKX. And we appropriately set the, uh, the twist factors in the correlation function. Then um, by construction, we can, we can uh, uh, use uh, the transfer matrix formalism to r write this correlation function as a, um, uh, a scalar product in our representation x, uh, with uh, v being the ground state of the vacuum module. And, uh, Using the, the decomposition structure of, of this X, we obtain, uh, if you like, a, a lattice analog of the uh, conformal block decomposition. So it's a decomposition of the uh, correlation function uh, onto uh, contributions, which I denote a G of, uh, say, M and omega. Uh, contributions from uh, the uh, standard modules, which appear in the decomposition of, uh, of X itself. So for completeness, I write the uh, definition of this uh, gm omega. You see that uh, it's really like in, uh, in CFT when you look at a conformal block. So I, I act with my two operators on the vacuum, and then I insert uh, a basis, a non-normal basis of my uh, internal uh, space. And uh, again, I contract this with uh, the action of two, uh, two operators. So um, with this, we really see that uh, this decomposition of X plays the role of a fusion rule of two uh, uh, standard modules or, or, uh, or uh, connectivity operators. Because um, with this decomposition, we, we really see what are the internal uh, channels that can uh, contribute to, to the correlation functions. Of course, there are uh, still a lot of, of things to, to do. So let me just summarize um, the results I've quickly presented today and, uh, and uh, list a number of questions. So uh, using this uh, so the, the analytic uh, solution of, of conformal bootstrap, we've, we've determined quite a large family of uh, OPE constants in the discrete spectrum. And um, for the uh, loop weighting operators, We've, uh, um, we've also extended uh, the and confirmed the uh, results uh, from uh, Delfino and VT. On the lattice, uh, what I've shown you um, in the last part of my uh, talk was this uh, definition of a new uh, family of modules, its decomposition, and um, how it helps to uh, describe the fusion of, uh, of two standard modules inside the correlation function. Now, of course, uh, as I said, there are, there are still a lot of uh, open questions. Uh, first, as I emphasized before, uh, the complete set of fusion rules in the, in the CFT for the ON model is, uh, is, is not uh, yet a solved question. Even with our results, it, it's, uh, it's uh, still not uh, uh, mm -hmm. Answered, huh? and um, also uh, our uh, definition of uh, lattice fusion. Although uh, we think it's very nice, it's uh, still very restrictive because uh, it's uh, it's only defined. We only define the fusion for uh, two standard modules, but not at all uh, uh, how how to fuse two uh, other types, uh, two modules of other types. This is because our construction is really. Uh, uh, diagrammatic, uh, sorry, diagrammatic and not uh, algebraic at all. So, for instance, we can ev even not, uh, we cannot even answer the question of associativity of our fusion uh, uh, because it, it would mean we are able to fuse X with something. And also, it's uh, restricted to the generic values of Z, so it's really, uh, we think it's a first step in. Uh, in in, in tackling this, uh, this problem. So
So with this, uh, I will say I'm done and uh, thank you for your attention.